Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, in this episode I give you some tips to start making a living as a photographer. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs and welcome to episode 79 of my photography, Lightroom and Photoshop tips. My name is Serge Ramelli, I'm a French photographer living in Paris and I'm here in the Sequoia tree uh, forest with my friend Kelvin Pimont and uh, we are going to do a special episode. Instead of doing a regular tutorial, Kelvin is going to ask me some questions that you guys have been asking over the last weeks about how to start making a living as a photographer. So Kelvin combined a few of your questions into a small interview that we are going to do now. All right, so the first question is, how did you get into interior design photography? Okay, well, I didn't intend to do that at all. What I, what I did was, uh, I was on holidays with you uh, in 2005, and we, uh, he was, he's an amazing Photoshop retoucher, and he's been for a very long time. And um, I never shot a photo in my life, and so we, we took a, I took a photo of a friend, and Kelvin showed me on Photoshop like what you can do with it, and turn it from like a very blah blah shot to an amazing shot. And that was a revelation to me. I mean, I just literally came back home, bought all Scott Kelby's books, and started uh, and anybody's books, but a lot of Scott Kelby's. He's been my mentor from the start. And I really like started learning photography. So then what I started was doing photography of Paris, and that went on for a couple of years, and I started to have a lot of shots of Paris. And a friend of mine was a had was an hotel owner. He had like two, three hotels in Paris, and he was opening up a new hotel called the Hidden Hotel in the Champs Elysees. And he asked me, uh, "Would you do some photos?" I saw some of your photos of Paris. Uh, I want to make a little challenge with a few photographers. Would you accept to shoot a room? And whoever wins that uh, shot gets the whole deal. Gets to shoot the whole hotel. It was like about three, four thousand dollars deal. And I said, "Yeah, why not?" I never shot a room in my life, so I went and I shot the room. But then I applied all the stuff you teach me on, on, on Lightroom, you know, I actually HDR, I did like some HDR at the time, and they loved the shot, and so they hired me to do the whole uh, hotel, which was my first deal, $4,000. Wow. Uh, the second question is, what is the minimum gear needed to get into design photography? Oh, so the minimum gear is a tripod. I bought a lot of tripod, I ended up buying a Gizzo tripod, and, uh, which is really nice. I will do inserts on all that part, uh, just so you know. Uh, so yeah, get a tripod, um, and I did 90% of all my shots with like, one one of the key thing I've been doing, which other photographers didn't seem to be doing, is that they, they were do like extract of rooms, and I like to give people uh, the impression that the rooms are big, and to actually show the people how big the rooms are. And one funny thing is that in Paris, rooms are really small. So anyway, I shot everything with a wide angle, which is a 1740 Canon. And uh, and when I do details, I go for a 24-70-2.8 Canon. But basically, that's it. Uh, when I started in the business, that was 2006, 2007, a lot of people were bringing like heavy lights, you know, coming with cars and Hollywood and trying to relight the whole room. But then that was the that's when HDR came out. And so I thought, hmm, I could just take several exposure and mix them how I want. And that's what I started doing. I never wanted to carry lights in my life. So that's it. Tripod, 1740, 2470, and a good full frame uh, camera, like D800, you know, 5D Mark II, Mark 360, all that, just good cameras. Pretty cool. And uh, what, was the, what, was the, what was the camera that you first used? Uh, the first one I used was a 5D Mark I. Oh, wow. The one not doing videos. Yeah, that's yeah. When I got like my first pay deal, I immediately went and bought the five D Mark One, which is a very good camera. Cool. And if you don't have money, you can find some for like two, three hundred dollars on eBay, and it's an amazing camera, amazing camera to do interior design. Cool. The uh, third question is: What should a beginner photographer do to get started into the business? Well, that's the thing. So I got first that first contract, but then I needed more contract, and. Um, one thing I've seen over and over and over with a lot of French photographers and people over the net is, and that's a weak spot uh, with a lot of photographers, is sales. You know, how to get these first contracts. And I found the only uh, trick that I found around this is this. People need photography all the time. Hotels, restaurants, uh, interior design, you know, architects. Uh, I mean, anybody who spends money building something wants to have nice photo of it and will be 
um, okay to spend a few thousands of dollars to get nice photos, especially if you invested 500,000, a million dollar or 10 million dollar. So uh, that's the main advice I really want to give you guys is what I used to do is every Tuesday and every Thursday morning, I would kick myself in the butt and force myself to call 50 hotels. And this is how it goes. I would not go to the bathroom. I would not go to eat. I would not do anything until I've called these 50 hotels because I hated doing that. So I had this little grid and I would just call hotels and say, hi, uh, did you renovate some rooms recently? Uh, do you need any photos? And uh, you know, some, I would just get the receptionist. I would never get the owner. I think I made a statistics like out of 50 calls, I would actually only speak to about 13 managers. And on the 13 managers, I would get three appointments. And on the three appointments, I would get a deal. Then I had a friend who uh, had no money. He was a great photographer, but it has this problem. He doesn't know how to sell. He doesn't want to make a phone call. He doesn't want to talk to anybody. He just wants to make photos. So I told him that story and he says, you know what? Okay, I'm going to take it at heart. And instead of making the phone calls, he actually went to the hotels not 50, but like 20 or something. And you know, he didn't go to it until he stopped just to force yourself at it. And he got his first job. And from there on, I think he got jobs for one and a half year from that point on. So that's the whole point. Uh, if you know how to take photos, people need photos. They just don't know you exist. You have to give them a call. That's, it, comes, it, it may sound stupid, but it's really like that. That's pretty cool. And uh, how do you grow from that first customer? That's the point. The point is that your photo needs to amaze the people that you see, if you take a photo, like, uh, you know, I have this saying that 10 years ago, when you would go to a wedding, only one guy had like an amazing camera today, you go to a wedding and they all have amazing cameras. So they, anybody, uh, because that's one of the problem I ran into when I walked into a hotel, like the guy said, yeah, but I already have photos. You know, I got like a 5d Mark three that my son bought, you know, and we just took photos. But they didn't use tripods, they didn't do presets online zoom, they didn't use dodge and burn. So I said, all right, you got photos, but what about like this? You know, and I show like this, all this special effect and they go, ooh, I want that. So the thing is, you need to amaze people with your photography and the difference is going to be Lightroom and Photoshop. It's not going to be the quality of your camera. Uh, it's going to be your quality as a retoucher. We live in a world which is very competitive and only the best retoucher survive. So, I believe that. Yeah. So anyways, that's the thing. If you, but if you do great photos and have some good retouching, people will talk about you and you will get jobs and you will be booked all the time with five secretaries and it's going to be amazing. And do you keep, uh, do you keep contacting uh, 50 hotels? And no, actually not. Uh, I used to do it at first, but then the word of mouth got so crazy that no, I'm, I'm trying to run away from hotels actually. So, <laughs> so today actually word of mouth is your real... Yeah. Yeah, that's how to get started. The thing is, I don't want to show off on this. It is, I mean, the thing is, people are not salesmen for most of the photographer I've met. And so they just need that extra push and they have to do it. They should not count on a middleman to do it. Like, oh, I'm, I found this agent or this, uh, like, for example, I have a guy the other day called me up. He worked for some kind of agent uh, who uh, pays him like so little money that it's not even worth being a photographer. If you find a customer yourself without a middleman, you get so much more money, it's unbelievable. And oh, one thing is real estate agencies. Real estate agencies, like very high end that sells like nice properties, they need good photos. You can call them. That's a nice, good pull. That's cool. And another question is, how do you figure out the pricing and the rates? And that's a good thing. Um, in the document, I mean, in the description of this video, I will put a link to a document which was done years ago by a union of photographers in Paris. And they basically give an estimate of how much you should charge on any type of photography jobs. You will see it's pretty amazing. Like, for example, let's say you, you do take a photo for a website. They will tell you, like, depending on how much visit the website has, how much you should charge per year. That's the point. In France, the way it works is normally you charge per year and every year you have to renew if they use the photo. I don't do that because that's, you know, you, they never will pay you your letter. So what I do is that I take whatever that's on that um, price sheet and I multiply it, multiply it by five. And, you know, and it's, it will be the right of the photo forever. I, I don't want to go back in a year. But anyways, to, to make a, a, a long story short, when I started off, uh, it was $50 for an approved photo. That means I, you know, I shoot, 
I usually shoot like deliver like 60 to 70 photos to a hotel, 10 to 20 uh, to a restaurant, 506 to a nice property, or if it's a big property, like 20. Anyways, an approved photo, 50 bucks minimum. Do not go below that because then it's a shame. Uh, I charge now $200 for one approved photo, but I went from 50 to 100 to 150 to 200. But that gives you, I know some people that charge a lot more than that, but that's just to give you an idea. So, uh, you know, I did this shoot the other day, uh, 76 photo approved. I charged everyone about a hundred dollars. That was a 6,000, 7,600 euros, which is about 10 grand. That was a nice shot. Uh, but you know, when I started, it was like 500 to a thousand for one restaurant or uh, 1,000 to 1,500 for a hotel about, but you know, you do two, three a month, you start making a good living and, uh, and then you just get better and better and, you know, higher restaurants, higher hotels and nicer properties, you know, just look around you, there's plenty. Yeah. And how many, you say two or three hotels in a month, how many do you think you can actually physically do? Like, Oh, I could do five, six in a month, no problem. So that's shooting, retouching. Yeah, it's like one or two days of shooting, one or two days of retouching. It's about as much time as shooting and, and retouching and using Lightroom as for me, speed it up four times uh, my retouching because I used to just do Photoshop. So it was like one photo at a time, one photo at a time. Now I retouch one and I think five, 10, 15, because I shoot manual as I explain a lot. So they, they, you know, like one room has the same lining. And so I retouch just one and I sync on everything else. That goes really fast. But for that, check out my interior design course. I talk all about that in detail. So, okay, that's cool. So if, um uh, let's say somebody gets a few clients and so on and they're, they deliver good photos and they're busy. Uh, how much do you, I mean, depending on where in the world, obviously, but let's say in the U S, uh, what would you say an average, uh, monthly oh, revenue anywhere between five to 10 to $15,000 per month, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I would say he's, if you really calls a lot, like five grand, you know, minimum, you know, when you start reading, you're making like two hotels a month or something. Yeah, I think, and then sky is the limit. Anyway, that's all for our questions. So thank you so much for answering everything. Well, thank you. All right, this is the end of this episode. I hope you like this type of uh, non-retouching episodes. And don't forget, it's Christmas, guy, and we're extending a 40% discount. You can still get it because it's Christmas. So uh, check it out. That's the best discount we ever did. And uh, I hope you do enjoy the courses. Thank you very much, and I'll see you then.